The Federal High Court Abuja on Monday fixed June the 30th to deliver judgment in the suit filed by Dino Melai challenging the passage of the Infectious Diseases Bill. Justice Ijoma Ojuku fixed the date after taking arguments from parties in the case. The bill, which is sponsored by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, and two other lawmakers, Pascal Obi and Tanko Sununu, seeks to empower the federal government to convert any property in the country, including private property, to isolation centers. Um, I will not call the adjournment of today um, a deliberate attempt to frustrate the hearing of this matter. Uh, in the sense that um, because of the period we are in and the limited number of days that the, especially the government offices are permitted to open, so I think that is what largely affected the ability of the respondents to quickly respond to all the processes we have filed before this honorable court. Be that as it may, um, the processes already filed by them as out of today is not competent in the sense that they fired out of time and they have not taken steps to regularize the processes. And the court today has also um, advised uh, parties to ensure that no step is taken to frustrate the matter that is already pending before this honorable court. Our expectation is that today, the council will be ready to go on with the case, but time and using another excuse of other party, as it is. The Speaker of the House of, of, of Representatives is the major party in this matter. He's ready to go on. We are ready since last week. It is for them to get ready. But as it is, like we told the court, the duty of the National Assembly is constitutional duty. You cannot go behind the back door to seek to restrain the National Assembly. And we are so grateful that the court did not listen to them this morning. And joining us live um, to discuss still on this matter is Rukewe Ugumba, who's a medical doctor, and of course, uh, Libros, who's still in studio. Dr. Ugumba, good morning again. Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us. We know it's 3 a.m. your time, but we are grateful that you are here. Now, <laughs> in spite of the strong reactions to the bill, yet the process continues. Is there a minimum requirement before a bill is tabled, you know, for houses consideration in your own opinion? Definitely, especially when it affects um, public um, rights. I mean, taking fundamental human rights. I didn't see them organize a public hearing and um, town hall meetings to get the public to have a buy-in. In fact, the speed at which it went through first and second reading is really alarming. And even the way the bill was constituted, it looks like a copy and paste um, from, from Singapore, was in Malaysia. Bottom line is you can't rush and go and put severe restrictions on movement, insist on vaccinations, and then seize property. Um, Hard-end um, property people's um, rights are being infringed on, and that's not the role, the role of the National Assembly to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I agree with you when you said you talked about the speed of passing the first and second reading. And we know there are other bills uh, that have not even been given attention. Is there an undertone to even why this is so fast? I'm really concerned about the overreaching of government. Now, you, this is a government that we are accusing of corruption. Now, you want to give further powers to certain people to take away fundamental human rights. Already, most of the laws in Nigeria are not properly implemented. We do have a quarantine act that can, is, that can suffice for this particular um, pandemic. So I do not see the reason why they're going to um, start, like, perverting, like you said, property. Um, and then, of course, insisting on vaccinations. Even here in Canada, you can't insist on immunizing everyone. It's, it's a choice thing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take the immunization, there may be consequences, like your child may not be enrolled in public school but you still have the right to choose. So you can't insist that you must use government laws to make people make choice. I think that's totally wrong and then impose unreasonable fines or, or, or prison sentences. So I know that the steps are wrong. I'm not really sure all the motivations behind it, mm -hmm. but I, for sure, Nigeria is not ready in the healthcare sector to deal with a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so if you think that you use um, heavy-handed overreaching laws to be able to control things, then you've got to...